Welcome to Flipping Tables, where we bring all of our religious thinking to Jesus who flips the table for his upside down kingdom. I'm Julie Sexton, and I'll be your host. Welcome to Season 2, Episode 8. This is going to be a special episode in our John series. My co-hosts today are Kimberly Daniels and Amy Crump, because the three of us just returned from IF 2024. We had a wonderful trip to Fort Worth, and the three of us were also joined by our friend Twyla and our friend Melissa, and we had another Amy. So we had a set of Amys on our trip. We were the Kentucky Six, and we met up with friends that Twyla and I made on our first trip to Israel, plus all of the bonus friends that each one of them brought. So I think our group was 22. Is that what you guys think? I think that's correct. It was a large group. <laughs> it, was, it was a large group, and sometimes I felt like we didn't have enough seats in our section that we had saved, right? Right. And then sometimes at the restaurant, at our restaurant, one of, in one of our meals, we had yeah, to. Yeah, our, our final meal. It was a big table. We were elbow to elbow. <laughs> we were elbow to elbow, and we had to, like, well, we didn't have to. We didn't want them to leave, but um, Renee's daughters were like, we're going to go eat by ourselves at another table. <laughs> so that was kind of They fun. were so cute. They were they were really cute. And um, so that was fun that we got to be with one another, and we got to be with this group. And um, so uh, you know friends when we came back from um if last year if you have been (laughs) with us since season one you know we had an episode like this where we did a if recap because that was kimberly and twala and my our first in person in person Mm -hmm. if event and so we wanted to go back to fort worth this year for the 10-year anniversary and we recruited three people to go with us and so amy you had never been to if so no. this was your first this if. was my first if event all the way around i've never really you've yeah. never been to an if local i have not wow no not a table not a local not a nothing so no it was amazing so yes i oh, was so glad you liked it yeah yeah um that was um pretty special and that's one reason i wanted to have you back on the podcast today because i wanted to get your fresh takes on that Uh, but before we get into kind of our takeaways and the things that really impacted us this weekend um you know we always have to fly out of louisville usually when we go to dallas Mm -hmm. and so we had one of those car rides last year we had a car ride late at night and i told Kimberly to hit the wall and Twyla yeah. got alarmed. It was very, it, that's why I mentioned. That's not what you say to someone at like two in the morning. <laughs> no, no, it is not. But we drove back, uh, drove back. Well, we flew back into Louisville in a normal afternoon time. And so our drive home, but it was still eventful. Oh, yeah. It was, yeah. <laughs> What were, what were the was the craziness that was being Amy and I were in the front of this explorer. So what were you guys? You guys started like with a you and Twyla in well, the back. I didn't start the. I I just was a supporter. You were a supporter. <laughs> so I I don't know. Melissa was not. It was Amy. The other Amy and Twyla were talking about well because you know we always talk about what we're gonna wear when we go to some like a conference or something and that turned into what do we wear every day which turned into um the 100 day dress challenge which some of us were like okay but can we make it a month and to which this Amy (laughs) was like Amy Crump said I will commit to seven days and that's as far as I'm going I I think that's a good dip your toe in the water (laughs) you know but Twyla was wanting us all to wear the same dress (laughs) <laughs> Which is alarming because... We all have different heights, body types, you know. And stages of life. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because she threw out, let's get, let's all just go to Old Navy and get a dress. And we, you and I, yes. were like, uh, hold on just a second. <laughs> I'm not wearing an Old Navy dress for 100 days. <laughs> right, yes. This is what my 16-year-old wears, and she has a perfect body. So that's where my, <laughs> that was where my mind went. I was, oh, no, no. Okay. <laughs> yes. Those of us in the perimenopausal stage of our life did not want to do that. Right, yeah. Okay, guys, I apologize because I know we have male listeners. And so just fast forward about like maybe 
three minutes here if you don't, if you don't I mean, hear if this. If they've made it this far into this is season true. two. Yes. Yeah. You can is, join us, okay. male listeners. You can uh, buy the same color polo shirt as well, us. Hey, there, there was a guy... Um, he was a, either a weatherman or a news anchor, but he wore the same suit every day for a whole year. And oh, nobody wow. noticed. So that's the difference yes. between men and women. Yes. Yeah, nobody that's the noticed. whole point, is that you accessorize <laughs> this one dress or one suit right, or whatever right. to make it look like different outfits. Right. So that's the challenge of the... Shopping your closet, being yes. resourceful, having a more minimalistic lifestyle, which reduces stress. Yeah. You know, and being grateful for what you have, which we'll get into later. I think so. it's a great challenge. I, yeah. I'm excited for it. But I do have a question. I don't leave my house every single day. So do I have to put my dress on even if I'm home? Wait, you have to post your picture, right? I think so, yeah. Okay, You're going to so, have to so, wear it. So I'm going to have to wear the dress. Oh, so it's okay. So no. I mean, maybe not on your walks, but... Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. For some point of the day, this, you have to put the dress on. This, okay, okay, that's perfect. Yes. I, I'm good with that, because I, I was kind of thinking about that. It's like, is Kimberly going to run I'm in her dress? I'm not going to run in my dress, no. Is, it mean, wouldn't last 100 days, you know, <laughs> no. with all the washes, but... <clears throat> yeah. No. And the other fun conversation was... The other Amy has sourdough starter, like I do, and uh-huh. I was asking her, because this was the first time I'd ever refrigerated my sourdough starter, uh-huh. and so we were discussing that. So then this, then there was a plot between several of you who yes. wanted to know if we could, what would happen if we took Vince and Pan, is that her? Pam. 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 Yes. See, my ears had not popped in the car yesterday. <laughs> well, she <laughs> talked about Pan, Pam, Pam, Pam. Yes. So it's that's kind of how it all broke yeah. down. Yeah. So yeah. I was like, is yeah. it Pan or is it Pam? <laughs> yes. So yes, Pam and Vince. We want to marry them and see what happens. Uh-huh. We would like to see what kind of magical bread could be created yes. between the two starters coming together. This is what it yeah. took for this Amy to get excited about sourdough was maybe I can raise a sourdough baby and see what yeah. happens. That was, yes. Um, maybe I can go from babysitting to raising a baby. <laughs> <laughs> so our car, try at least. <laughs> our car ride conversation Basically means that we are going to be doing a dress challenge. Mm-hmm. So we would love some dress um, suggestions. Right. And um, I'm thinking black. Are we down with black? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. And Just pick one that you already have that you really like. I don't own a t-shirt dress, Miss Millennial. <laughs> <laughs> she, she, I wish you could have seen her, her face. Her face. <laughs> I didn't say it had to be a t-shirt dress. Okay. Okay. We gotta work out those parameters, but in any yeah, case, okay. we're gonna be in a similar dress yeah. for a week and raising baking spread s- sourdough bacon. It makes it sound like we're heading back. Pioneer women, <laughs> way. we are pioneer women. We are being resourceful. <laughs> we're just trying to survive. <laughs> I think so. It's a good thing we went to if yeah. because one of my prayers for our trip was that we would be refreshed from being in this life-giving community. And mm-hmm. I told my husband last night, and the funny thing was, was I didn't tell him about any of the great speakers or any of the content. I was, I was just really kind of tired and I didn't want to, to do that. But I said, when you're at IF gathering in person in this large event, I said, you're there with thousands of women and some men who are the ones who are serious about being discipled by Jesus, who are serious about the Great Commission, who are coming in there with authentic worship. They are, these are, these are the people. And so I'm like, it's just, it's like being in this perfect, we don't bring our baggage and things in there like we're all we're all just running after jesus Mm -hmm. and i said that Mm -hmm. is life giving yes Mm -hmm. it is well and it's and and you're you're coming in though authentically because i I understand what you're saying when you say we don't bring our baggage because into like to mess up what's happening there but we are all bringing who we are yes right before jesus and being like you know what this is all we are are vessels and we just want to be servants even with whatever it is mm-hmm. that, that came in with us this weekend. So, yeah. Well, and there was this authenticity where we can turn to the person next to us and talk about our sin. Yeah. Yeah. Which was part of the... Yeah. One, they mm-hmm. broke us right out of the gate with that, right? Like, right. Let's just get in. <laughs> oh, and, this and, is how it's going to be. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yes. We're going to confess our sin and then 
Jenny was like, okay, now confess your real sin, right? Confess the one that you, <laughs> the one that share. you really don't want to say out loud. Right. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, that's, that's a fantastic, but I don't, I would imagine that in that 13,000 people, um, that probably wasn't as hard if I was sitting in my regular church. A hundred percent. Yes. Now I was really grateful for the person that I was sitting next to when that challenge came out, you know, cause I, it was a safe place to be authentic like that. So, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. So that, that was just, that's the atmosphere. And that is a very refreshing place um, to be. Indeed. So um, Jesus was the theme and he, everything was about Jesus. Everything was for him. Everything was done through him. And it was, I think, whatever happened at If was accomplished by Jesus, the Holy Spirit, the Father. I mean, they were just, they were working among us. Absolutely. Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah. So, um, Amy, since you have, this is your first trip, what what did you think? Like, I know you've been to a lot of other events and conferences and retreats. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, I would say, like, what you said, just to piggyback on that, the authenticity is was unparalleled um, in that room. I love that, um, you know, I, I always love seeing, like, the, the Holy Spirit just runs a thread through conferences. You have a variety of speakers that, that are up there, but I just felt like it was all so cohesive and... Um, that was a gift to me. Like, the, the Lord gives me gifts of order because he knows that I like that. Um, so, you know, that just, the way that I just saw him working and speaking as the, the it's kind of like we talked about with the Gospel of John, like it all built on each other to kind of get us ramped up for what's coming next. And, um, yeah, I had just a real appreciation for the way that happened. Yeah. So, it was your second, if in person. Yeah. I was wondering how I would feel about it being in the stadium. But, um it was really cool. Something personal for me was that, well, I wasn't able to sing how I normally do because I didn't have, I had less of a voice than I do today. So I was like kind of mouthing the words, you know, just because when I tried, nothing was really coming out. But when I looked across, normally, you know, when we're in church, you're just looking at the worship leaders and I could see a sea of women just like raising their hands to the Lord and worshiping and Mm -hmm. it was just um it was just special it was special to be there and to see to see other people but not in like a making people feel uncomfortable because you're watching them it was like they're way across the room you know so um it was like intimate and also encouraging to see the multitude Yes. Yeah, the term <laughs> cloud of witnesses came up a few times in the, yes. in the weekend. And yeah. I felt like, and they were talking about kind of other realms, but I was like, I feel like we're in a cloud of witnesses, yeah. you know, when we were in uh-huh. this. We were also in a cloud when we were in line for the bathroom or whatever else. But, <laughs> yeah. Yes, but we were in that cloud of witnesses, and it was a, yeah. it was really cool to be a part of it. Uh-huh. Um, yeah, and it's um, it gives you that picture. You said multitude, so... I go to Revelation 7 in my mm-hmm, mind, mm-hmm. and I think about all the different denominations and races and women <laughs> and men and people who were in that room, and we didn't all look alike, and that was glorious. And none of that mattered. Like, exactly. what mattered mm-hmm. in that room was Jesus, and they made that really clear from the very beginning, and that carried through the whole time, mm-hmm. you know? It just, that's what mattered was Jesus. What you noticed was Jesus in people. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. And yes. because I thought everybody looked radiant mm-hmm. throughout yeah. the whole event. And I never <laughs> encountered one person who I would have thought was being impatient or rude or anything. Right. I bought my bottled water from the same dude the whole weekend. <laughs> <laughs> he was just really nice, and I kept finding him. And so, and he even said, he was like, this has been the craziest thing, like to have so many women in this space and you all have all just been so, it's been amazing to serve you, is what he said, you know. Aww. And that's the guy that, was so yeah, awesome. he's just the cold water guy, you know. Yeah. So. I really appreciated him because I, I bought water from him as well. Yeah. Because there usually wasn't a line. Right, yeah. No, he was just kind of carrying his water around loosely. It was very <laughs> nice, actually, but yeah. <laughs> and if anyone can give give me some cold water... <laughs> I am always happy to hey, see them. look at the water theme coming back. Yeah. yeah that's right. Yeah. It, I mean, we really were in the water. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. We were in the water. The water was flowing. Living water was flowing in Dickie's arena. Mm-hmm. And I told Paul, I said, 
I gotta tell you, that arena was unlike any arena I have ever been in. Agreed. And I said, I don't even know where the parking lot was. I don't, I mean... That's true. We actually kind of... Because if you remember, we always (laughs) entered in the front, Mm -hmm. but then when we came... To the second day, because of the marathon, we entered from the back of the arena. Right. And I never saw, like, parking. But it was be- it was just a beautiful place. There was, yeah. a, there was grassy, I mean, was like that a, like a pavilion or something like, yeah. that was on one of the levels? And, and we just, it was amazing. It was lovely. It was. Yeah. It was like the, they only held women's events there or something. <laughs> I know. I was like, this is a very special place. I love this um, arena. Yeah. It was unlike um, anything else. But I it probably, I mean, I think there were some unique things about the building, but it, I think it was really the people in the building. Absolutely. Yes. Which, is, yeah. it, which mm-hmm. is just kind of the thing. Like, it's when we think about church, we often think about a building, mm-hmm. even though we know we should think about the people in the building, that the people are the church. And I think it's like an event like if. And it becomes so much that it's really about the people. Mm-hmm. And um, that was such a such a blessing. Well, um, on Friday morning before we um, we we took a little field trip down to Waco as all as all um, women our age like to do. <laughs> um, funny little thing I did I did tease my husband and I told him that we went to. He said, "Remind me what you're doing in Waco. I don't remember what you were going there to see." And I said that we were going to see the remains of the Branch Davidian. <laughs> um, I don't even know that they're. Our remains, and no either. one would want to go see that <laughs> for sure. And he said, he said, that's not your kind of humor. He said, so he said, you really, he's like, I was like, what is she talking? He was like, that seems so unlike her. Like that she would want to go see something like that. And he said, but I was just like, he bought fully in. I, like I was, <laughs> I was like, oh, that's bad. But it was kind of funny. So we had a good laugh about it. Um, But what I prayed on Friday morning before we headed to Waco and then to IF was, I prayed that the generations would return to Jesus, the fount of living water. And I told the Lord, I said, I am thirsty and I am hungry and I have come to this fount of living water, to the bread of life. And I am praying that you would satisfy me with the richest of spiritual food. And that's what he did, friends. He nourished my spirit and soul and body and... I wanted him to revive me. I said, pour out your spirit and revive us. That's what I wrote in my journal, us. Mm -hmm. Because I didn't want, I I, I wanted everyone to leave feeling refreshed and revived so that we could run um, refreshed, pressing into the darkness with the light of the world. And that was loosely the theme of if was John 8, 12, where Jesus says, I am the light of the world and whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. And that was um, something that I had kind of just been anticipating because in our John study, we will be in John 8 um, next week. And so I was really excited to um, kind of think about that. But Really, I felt like living water was a big theme that kind of ran through the speakers. Um, And of course, Christine Kane opened the event and she came out talking about the miracle of the feeding of the 5,000, which we just covered Mm -hmm. in John 6. And she was amazing, as always. Yes, she was. Kimberly said, I almost got saved again, <laughs> which is kind of a running joke that we we have. We say that every time we hear Christine Kane, but um, you know what? She brings the substance. She does. Yep. And so what were some of your highlights about um, Christine Kane? Well, I will just, this is one thing that I just wrote down that I thought was so good. And I think it's good, especially as women, for us to know this is talking about the little boy that stepped forward with his lunch, that he had no idea that he, that morning, that he was carrying the ingredients for a miracle. And if his mama packed that lunch that morning, she had no idea that she was packing the ingredients for a miracle. And so just Mm -hmm. for us to kind of remember that when we get stuck in the things that kind of might seem mundane or frustrating that like we, you know, those are the, it's in the small things and the little yeses um, that God can do something that we never would have ever imagined. Mm-hmm. Yeah, she had she had so many good nuggets that I took away. Um, when she talked about, 
you know, the, Jesus looked at the crowd and had compassion on them. Mm-hmm. And how every time that we share the word of God with the next generation, it's a work of compassion. Yeah. You know, and I just thought about um, how a lot of people, they just don't know. They just don't know how much God loves them. And it truly is a compassion, a compassionate call that that we're living out. Um, and she also talked about how, and this kind of steps on toes, but revival in America is going to inconvenience our balanced life. Mm, yeah. And I was like, oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, it sure will because you know we step out into these scary scary things that you know we're called to do it's not always convenient and it's gonna throw off you know personal time that i value you things that i want to do i'm gonna have to set aside but really um we don't have that much time to do it and it's important i loved that she said that because it we are so self-focused, even mm-hmm. as the church. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We are very much focused on what Jesus can do for me, not and, 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 and thinking of it as, you know, building up myself instead of building up his kingdom mm-hmm. and his church. And we make our applications from our scripture time about us. Yeah, absolutely. That's our default setting. Right. Yeah. And I was going to say, we we say this, and we're not calling anybody out. I I do that every time. Every time I read the Bible, I'm like, what can I get out of it for me? You know, whether I say that out loud or not, that's, that's exactly what I'm doing, you know? Well, and one of the things that Christine said was we need to know the God of the miracle. So we should know God personally, Uh and we should expect that God has something for us every time we come to the Word. Because one of the speakers said, I think it might have been Jada, but that you can spend time with Jesus and in the Word, but actually not really spend time with Jesus and Right. Right. The other thing that Christine, that I just looked at my notes where she said that we need to move our prayers from the management realm to the miracle realm. Right. And I think Uh that even goes with our Bible study. Like when you're saying, like when we're looking at it and saying, what can I get? What is this? How do I apply this to my life today? Which is not a bad question to ask, but it's just that whole, are we trying to just manage the next thing or the, or are we looking at what's, what's the heavenly, what's the eternal consequence of what this is? Right. I thought that, um, Christine and Jada's talks for me went very hand in hand Mm -hmm. um, because Christine talked about um, like picking up the or from the the management to miracle like there are things that you can that God wants you to take care of on your own right right? Mm -hmm. Um, so that you can focus on him and then jada was talking about being grateful for what you have because these things that we're distracting ourselves with that aren't necessarily bad things but they are they kind of have this um domino effect of distracting us away mm-hmm. from what god is calling us to do so yeah that w- I, I thought, you know, everything that Christine Ka- Christine Kane said complimented what Jada said. Absolutely. And they both had great takeaways. Well, one of them was focus- focused on the bread of life, and the other was focused on the living water. Right. Yes. Right. And bread and water, yeah. we need both of these substances. Uh-huh. Absolutely. And Jesus is actually the bread that we need, and Jesus is the water that we need. Right. Mm-hmm. And we drink and eat a lot of bread and water of the world. Right, things that aren't truly satisfying. That will not satisfy mm-hmm. us. They actually deplete from us. Mm-hmm. They distract us from the mission. They get mm-hmm. us completely off um, off track. I mean, I can go down. I mean, I thought Jada's illustration of talking about the, pl- the little clear and beige storage organization organization containers because i love that kind of stuff Mm -hmm. and she was just talking about 
you know, doing all of those things. And I w- I can watch videos on that because that stuff is so, I'm like, oh, that's so organized and so beautiful and so wonderful. And it's, mm-hmm. you know, it's why we, we as women like to go to Magnolia because mm-hmm. we want Joanna Gaines to organize our lives right. and mm-hmm. um, we want everything in neutrals and clear and and pristine mm-hmm. and it's just it's a magical place. It is. Yeah. I yeah. said it's it's it was everything was white and black and beautifully green and yeah. <laughs> and it all had a wonderful aroma and a wonderful fragrance. It and, did. And I yeah, there were no like uh, athletic bags laying around or receipts <laughs> or junk mail on the counters, you know, like it's the Yeah. <laughs> and and we can chase that. Absolutely. And uh-huh. build our lives and spend all of our free time and energy trying to achieve that. Mm-hmm. And we can have all of that and it would not satisfy us. Right. I had a moment the first night when I was laying in, in the hotel bed and, and I looked up and there was this piece of art on the wall that was like, it was very Texas. It was like a cowboy mm-hmm. with his pistol or whatever. Yeah, know. we have that too. Okay. Um, <laughs> and people who know me know that like, I really don't like guns and that's a whole nother discussion. But anyway, and I'm thinking like that, need, that, that, that would need to go. And then I thought in my head, like, well, that's funny that you're, like, decorating a room that you're going to leave in two days. <laughs> right. And then you were decorating a room that you were leaving in two days. We did the same thing. Okay. We wanted to move a chair and and a, and a mirror. Right. Well, right. I was like, if they have the picture on that side, they need to have a picture on the other side because it's very unbalanced. <laughs> right. But here, I'm, like, I'm, I'm wasting my energy, like, thinking about this. And I yeah. really did have this moment in there with the Lord where I'm like, you know what? Like, I hope that my roommate would tell you that I like to keep a tidy hotel room. Like, I don't want to, like make it a complete disaster but like i don't need to spend my time decorating your room i'm going to leave in two days Mm -hmm. that doesn't absolve me from all responsibility that i have in that room but it does give me some perspective and then as we got into the weekend and there was a sweatshirt that i saw that i ended up buying before i left that said may the earth or may the heavenly things continually interrupt the earthly things amen and i just i thought about that picture again Laura. i just go yeah i do have earthly things i have to take care of but i don't want that to be the thing that's all encompassing and that's what jade was talking about about Mm -hmm. like yeah it's fine to like put that organizational bin in there but when you get to the point where it all has to be the same color and the same brain but the white calligraphy and the stickers and the you know Mm -hmm. it it becomes all encompassing and so Mm -hmm. i really want to guard that against my life so that picture that i didn't really like is now it kind of in my mind of like yeah Man, how do I make sure that that is that's how I live? Is are we decorating your room and I leave in two days? You know, I I'm sitting here and I'm thinking, I'm thinking about the dresses and <laughs> the <laughs> we're trying to simplify our life, yeah. right? Uh-huh. And I think that's actually a really good application for us coming out of this weekend because you saw that you. You, you you wasted some brain time right. thinking about redecorating a hotel room that we were going to check out of in just a couple of days. And mm-hmm. we were having silly conversations about, like, the same thing. Mm-hmm. Um, not about the painting, but we, we, had, we had mutual feelings about, about the very Texas picture. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, yeah, it's really, it's really good. It's really good. Yeah. So I, I, uh-huh. I think that it got into us, right? It did. Uh-huh. It cha- what we encountered there in the Word of God was working in us when we were in the hotel room mm-hmm. because you were encountering Jesus right there. Absolutely, hundred percent in those moments, mm-hmm. and and then you've brought that to the table, and now, um, friends, you can take an application out of that because mm-hmm. this morning, what I what I felt like the Lord was saying to me is like, because I'm because I go back and forth like, what do I do about social media, Lord? And he's he just said to me so clearly today, he's like, Julie, you don't have to like completely give up social media, but here's a couple of things that you could stop doing on social media. You don't have to watch those silly reels. Right. You don't have to do that. Mm-hmm. But you can still get on social media and connect with your friends that you have made and these wonderful ministry leaders that you follow who like actually sew into your life. But you don't have to like I don't have to watch videos about someone making ice cubes because there's (laughs) there's so many videos. And I mean, that's just a filler of Mm -hmm. something. And so I was just he was like, let's decrease some of that Mm -hmm. and free up some space. Mm -hmm. And I want to talk about Sadie. She is amazing. Mm-hmm. We love Sadie Robertson Huff. Mm-hmm. And Amy and I, you know, our daughters, I, I think, grew up watching um, 
the rock the, the show the duck dynasty show yes the yeah. duck dynasty yeah. show. we had a premiere party at our house one time when the new season came out so yes it was, <laughs> and, it was a thing for us <laughs> and so you know it was it was a fun fun kind of thing but when you see where Sadie is and with that family it's such a great they're such a great family and I I just love her every year I think she is I think she kills it Mm -hmm. every year absolutely and I, she was your favorite last year she was. and yeah. and mm -hmm. i feel like she was probably one of your favorites again this year too mm -hmm. yeah yeah she's just so authentic and um she's doing what she was called to do right i mean that video of her her five-year-old self yeah it, it that, just that was brought talking tears. about jesus yeah. and yeah uh-huh yeah. It was it was really really special, and um, my daughter is so excited for when we host F Local um, to watch it. But I, I gave her the link and I told her I said you can watch it until Tuesday night. I said go mm -hmm. ahead and watch it now, and then I was like, because if you see it get see it twice, you'll you'll just be double oh, blessed. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. And uh, so she was really excited to see it. And I mean, Sadie's a role model to her. Mm -hmm. You know, we have these twenty two year old daughters, yep. and. They look up to her and they they admire how she's running. And I asked um, Lydia because Sadie mentioned how social media people had come after her um, this week, and probably evangelical Christians is probably who oh, yeah. mostly came oh, after yeah. her. And um, we didn't know what she had done mm -hmm. um, that caused. And so I asked Lydia if I said, "Do you do you know what it do you know what it was?" And she said. She she and Christian, her husband, made a dance video, and they used the trending audio that everybody's been using in all their videos, which was the Beyonce um, music, and the people shredded her mm. over over that song and and all of the things. And I told Lydia, I said, I would almost bet that Sadie had never even heard the whole song. She only heard, had probably ever heard mm -hmm. the. Um, the chorus. The chorus yeah. that mm -hmm. was that trending audio, and they were just doing something fun. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. for me, and I'm not saying that this is what Sadie should do, um, I, I admire her so much, and I think she, in, in a lot of ways, I look up to her as, you know, because I see such value and depth in her, in her that she teaches mm -hmm. me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and sometimes people think that we're, because we're older, that um, we we can't learn from these younger people, and that's just complete BS. It's, right, that's da false. that's dangerous. Thank very, you. that's dangerous. very dangerous and mm -hmm. very very false. And um, but I was thinking for myself, I I was like, you know what? I don't have to do the trends that the world is doing because the world is going to attack me um, for for doing those things, and um, and I'm never gonna I'm not ever gonna know what the right Thing by the world standards is, and, I, and and if it's the world standards, it's probably wrong, mm -hmm. according yeah. to according to my my faith and following Jesus. So it's like I'm not I don't want to follow the trends of the world. I want to mm -hmm. follow Jesus, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and there is a way that I can still interact with social media and use it as a good tool, and um, that's what I'm going to do. Yep. Yeah. One of the comments um, that Lydia said was, she said they they were like, you need to you need to put down that mic because that's unbiblical. Oh, okay. Calling her out as being a as a Bible teacher and because she's a woman and she shouldn't be teaching, mm. which that fires us up, right? Mm -hmm. I yep. mean, like, um, that's ridiculous because something that you like to say, Amy, is that if we what are we doing with fifty percent of the body? Well, and I got this from my my the, my mentor Beth Guggenberger, who I adore, but is that we can't bench fifty percent of the team, you know? Mm -hmm. And and when half of the people who are believers and the, who have been given the Great Commission are women, they got to do it. And and I said all this weekend, I kept saying, "Oh, watch out, because we're getting off the bench, friends. Here it comes," you know. Mm -hmm. And I, I said it quite a few times this weekend because um, it's time. It's time. It it, mm -hmm. it is time. And. And I told Paul last night, I said, don't, don't you know that if Jesus had Mary Magdalene announce the resurrection, that he intends for 
the women of God, his girls, his ladies, to run the race to finish the Great Commission along with the guys. Absolutely. Because if we just leave this up to the guys, this isn't going to get done. So, yeah. so the church needs to be making every opportunity available for women to grow in these gifts. And it doesn't just mean that we should only be teaching other women. Absolutely not. I think about like... Um, you know, if somebody says something that underestimates what one of my girls can do and one of my two daughters can, that fires me up. Because yeah. I'm going to tell mm-hmm. you what, those two chicks are, they're tough and mm-hmm. determined. And they're some of the strongest human beings that I know. And when I when I th- was thinking that, saying that to you, I thought, and Jesus says the same thing about every one of us. Everyone. Like, mm-hmm. don't you dare underestimate what my girls can do, you know, and, mm-hmm. and I love that about him. <laughs> I do too. I do. I love it about him. I, I love the warrior side of Jesus. Mm-hmm. And I also love that that's the root. Um, Amy and I just finished reading Beth, Beth Guckenberg's book, mm-hmm. um, Warriors of Eden. And that, that word for being a helper is being a warrior, being a warrior, mm-hmm. being yeah. a warrior, and so we have a sword in our hand, and we are being equipped and trained, and we have the filling of the Holy Spirit, just like our brothers, and we mm-hmm. need to run shoulder to shoulder together. Absolutely, and there are things in this world that women can do that men can't do, and vice versa, and right. you know, and we and. And that's okay. It is. Mm -hmm. But we got to stop putting labels on what those things are when it comes to the things in the heavenly realms. Mm -hmm. Because Jesus never put those limits on us, on any of us. He did not. No, he did not. And um, before we just get lost into this, I (laughs) Mm want to say, because um, Amy, you leaned over to me when Catherine Wolf came on stage and you said, I've never heard her speak. Mm -hmm. And I don't remember what I said, but it was probably like, She's going to knock get yourself ready. off. Yeah, you, you, uh, yeah, it was something to that effect of like, you, yeah, we'll get yourself ready. And I told you all when I came in today that her talk was worth the entire trip um, mm-hmm. to me. And I don't want to take too much out of it because it's John chapter 9, and you're going to want to use it in a few weeks when you, have, when you do that, um, that episode. But um, just listening to her and the notes that I took from that are some of the most impactful things from the whole weekend. And just um, she, she is... She is a warrior in every mm-hmm. sense of the word um, and was so inspiring to me and just in, in my own walk in life. So, yeah. Yeah, she is she is wonderful. Yeah. yeah. Um, one of the things that she said, um, if you don't know Catherine Wolf, um, friends, she had a stroke in her mid, um, mid to early 20s, and um, it has not stopped her in any way. Um, she has fought to be able to take a few steps and and to continue to live. And she lives an abundant and full life. And one of the things that she said was, um, when Jesus said in the Sermon on the Mount, blessed are the poor, um, she said something about for those that the systems of the world don't work. Mm-hmm. And I loved that. Me too. Me too. Yeah. Why did you love it? Well, because I just, you know, if, if you know me, like, I mean, I, 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 a lot of justice stuff just touches my heart, you know? And so whether it's just people, marginalized people in any way, shape or form, like, I think that we, it's really easy for us as white Western Christians living in the South, you know, like for us to just, that things are built for us. They yes, are. Mm-hmm. They are. And we need to acknowledge that there are other people who they are not built for. And so I loved that she talked about that because she just was saying that that's, those are some of the people that Jesus was talking about when he says, blessed are the poor. It's that, and I, yeah, the thing I wrote was for those who, for whom the world is not made. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, that just struck me because I go, yes, that's exactly right. And like, it's that whole giving value to every human. It's that Imago day that is in every single one of us that is around that um, that she challenges to continue to look for. And I just, yeah. She said, um, I have told my, my kids, uh, um, a little bit of my background, I have two children that are adopted from West Africa. And so I've always told my kids, we are a conspicuous family. Like, it's obvious that there's, that, you know, there's an adoption that took place in the situation. And we want to try to glorify God in everything that we can, in every way that we can, um, because that's just going to be part of our story. And one of the things that she said was, and I, I re- actually put this on a card and put it in my kid's bathroom, was just that says, the works of God are on display by looking at you. Mm-hmm. And that's the new kind of thing I want to say to to my to my kids, to anybody who's in any of those kind of 
groups for which the world was not made, you know, um, and or which the world doesn't work. And so that's very just, that was the inspiring things that she said to me that I, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think it's important that we all realize that we are all broken pottery. We are, we are cracked pots and that the light of the world needs to come through those cracks. And I'm pretty sure that Mary Beth, um, who was on a few weeks ago talking about living water and will be back to talk about John nine, um, in a couple of weeks, but that, you know, just that picture of that's my life, these cracks in me, the things that dis- should disqualify me or the things that make me disabled, um, in in a sense, they are actually the things where God's light shines out. Mm-hmm. And um, I just think Catherine Wolf radiates God's light in a very mm-hmm. dark world, and she is inspiring. Um, and all of the women and men that we heard teach us this weekend, they were inspiring. Mm-hmm. They were people who are committed to see, to making disciples and um, having the Great Commission finished. We are all running like we expect the Great Commission to be accomplished in our lifetime. And mm-hmm. frankly, every generation that's been on planet Earth since Jesus ascended from heaven was supposed to and prob- and has lived like that or should have lived like that. Mm-hmm. And um, so, so that's not being like living like um, a doomsday kind of kind of life this is this is the way because we only have such a short time mm-hmm. um in in life in general it's a vapor mm-hmm. it's what the scripture says it's a vapor the other thing that i love about this is because we don't just focus on discipleship we focus about about being sent, about going out, being survivors who illuminate the path for people who are walking in darkness. And there are people walking in darkness all around us. And I don't remember, I think it was Jada, but or maybe it was David Platt. I think it was David Platt because David talked some about um, the woman at the well, right? And the living water. And he talked and he always, because this is what David Platt does. He disciples and then he always turns us to face outward. So anytime you sit under his teaching, he he reminds you of the 3.8 billion people Mm -hmm. who are in the red zone, who are in the red zone is this, this, part of the world that has the least access to the gospel. And um, it's also the area of the world where the gospel kind of launched. Right. Mm -hmm. Yes. And I always think that's so interesting when we're talking about the Middle East and this in this region and this these countries. But that is where when the the disciples left you know, we're commissioned and filled with the Holy Spirit. It was to go to Jerusalem, Ju- Samaria, Judea, and to the ends of the earth. And they, you know, reached that area. And I'm like, it seems to me like the way that the Great Commission is going to end is we're going to cross the marathon line in the place where it started. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So there was a marathon in Fort Worth, Texas this weekend. And we are running a marathon. Yep. And our marathon began in Jerusalem, and it's going to end in Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. And this red zone is in this area of the world that needs the gospel, and we've got to make sure that they have it, and everyone is being sent. And so that's what is super exciting about what IF is going to do next year, because there's not going to be an IF gathering 25. There is going to be gather 25. And the ministry is going to partner with every church and every denomination, men and women, everyone coming together. The goal is all seven continents engaged. How many um, Christians do are there in the world? There's. Do you remember what the number like was they gave? Billion? I think it was like two point four billion. Is yeah, what I want to say, but something I, billion. I don't, I'm not it, sure that's it, correct. Two point four, two point five 
billion Christians mm -hmm. in the world. What would happen if we mobilized all of us, we came together and we prayed and we worshiped and we repented and we were commissioned to finish mm -hmm. the Great Commission? Mm -hmm. What would happen if that, and that's the thing. So for 25 hours on March 1st of 2025, we will gather to be the people who hopefully see the last great revival, who have experienced the pouring out of the Holy Spirit to finish and cross the line. Mm -hmm. That's that's what it's all about. Yep. Are y'all excited about that? Yeah. I just have to say, <laughs> I told um, my family about that, and Luke said, uh, Mom, I think it's going to be really hard to get every Christian on earth in the same room. <laughs> <laughs> I said, oh, honey, it's all right. We don't have to be in the same place. Right. Yeah. <laughs> he, was, he was looking at me like, I don't want to squash your dreams. <laughs> <laughs> Reality check. Right. 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 Yeah. There's, a, there's a couple of obstacles. And there's some other obstacles. Yeah. Uh huh. It, it's, it's not like it's going to be easy. It will be easy for us. Right. But we have work to do. Well... We live in the first time period where something like this is even possible. Correct. Mm -hmm. yeah. Because of AI. Mm -hmm. And I know some of us get a little freaked out by AI, and probably for good reason, right. because we've, yeah. we've also grown up with the internet, mm -hmm. and, and we know how something good can be leveraged for mm -hmm. evil. And But with AI, the capability of translating a message into Every language is going to be possible. Mm -hmm. And with the technology that we have, like David Platt said, Paul would have never imagined <laughs> walking around with a device in his hand. Right. Yeah. He's writing letters and he waits two months for them to get delivered and then waits two mm -hmm. more months for them to come back, you know, and like, and I can, and I do every single day. I, I'm this morning, I'm communicating with people who are in Africa about business that needs to be taken care of today. Mm -hmm. We're handling it. In my hand. Yeah, it's, in it's your crazy. Hand. Yes. And you can fly there. I can't. Yes, he said that too. He's like, can you imagine if Paul would have thought of like this machine that could just pick you up and take you across and land you back down? You know, it's insane. It really is. But <clears throat> it is. We have all these th these technological mm -hmm. advances to yeah. actually finish the Great Commission. Can mm -hmm. you, I can remember like being a child though and hearing like in Sunday school about you know that Jesus is going to come back and like everybody's going to see it all at one time and I was like. That's crazy because this was pre-internet and pre-all this stuff. And like mm -hmm. now, like literally the connectivity that we have is just, it's mind blowing is, is what it is. And it, it makes me read Revelation in a different light when I start to see mm -hmm. where we are in technology. You know, mm -hmm. um, it's fascinating. Yes. So friends, we are super excited about um, what's coming and what we get to be a part of. Mm -hmm. And it will all be worth it. Mm -hmm. And so if you would like to learn more about this and you are local to Lexington, Kentucky, we will be hosting an If Local on March 23rd. And we would love for you um, to register to that. We'll put the link in the show notes and you can do that. You can come and learn about Gather 25, but Gather 25 has a website that you can visit and mm -hmm. learn about it there because it's going to happen in six different locations around the world. Um, I know that they are. there will be one location in the United States of a large gathering, but the hope is that all these churches across the United States will also be gathering in this 25 hours. Mm -hmm. And the same for um, Manchester, England, and Peru, and Singapore, and Rwanda, mm -hmm. and I'm missing a couple. Something in Australia, and I don't, yeah, but Yes. yes. So all of that information is on their website, but it is really exciting and it's something definitely for all of those in Christ for us to be praying about. Um, but we should write, wrap up with some bright spots and I have some ideas of what everybody's bright spot is going to be. So you can't just say if. Um, <laughs> so Kimberly, do you have a bright spot? Yeah. Well, I was thinking about this while we were talking. Um, I had never spent time with Melissa. And I realized she's the girl that if you want someone to go to the bathroom with you, she's going to walk with you. 
Like she saw there was a long line and I couldn't get food, so she gave me one of her chicken tenders. Like she's a good, a good girl to have with you. <laughs> she's the girl who had Advil in her purse yep. and the box uh-huh. of tissues that in yes. her bag. Uh huh. <laughs> that because we were crying, <laughs> yeah. all, all of uh, us crying all and of. sick, <laughs> and uh, pollen count was high. So yes, uh-huh. yes. brought back a little souvenir. <laughs> But, yeah, uh, just being able to spend time with Melissa for the first time was my bright spot. It's fantastic. Yeah. How about you, Amy? Um, well, so I got to room with Amy Hayden and the other – so we were the team of Amy's, and um, she's a lot of fun. We have a lot in common. We had a lot of we, – we chit-chatted a whole lot. But my bright spot was is that one morning – the first morning I got up and got out of the shower, and she had come back to the room and brought me coffee from the coffee shop downstairs, and that was just – a gigantic, huge blessing to me. And so... That's um, so sweet. In the context of the whole weekend was amazing, but that was a definite uh, shining moment for me. So thanks, mm-hmm. Amy. That was some good coffee. <laughs> and she brought me a Splenda, which is exactly what I want in it. So yeah, it's beautiful. Oh, oh, that is beautiful. And it's... They're both service-related. Mm-hmm. Because mm-hmm. Jesus serves. Yeah. yeah. And mm-hmm. those were... Both of, both of your bright spots were that way. Well, my bright spot was... It's kind of a tie. We went to, and it's not going to be about the, about the the if gathering, but it was the six of us sitting in outside the bakery at Magnolia with a box of six cupcakes before us, and just sharing these cupcakes in this eighty degree beautiful sunshine in the place where Joanna had made sure that it was all the right atmosphere was perfect, and we were, and it's just magical. It is. Mm-hmm. It is. And just to be able to spend time with you girls and talk and laugh and eat cupcakes and um, and then to do it after we have lunch. I think that the three things that we did there mostly were eat cupcakes, then go to Magnolia Table, and then come back and get our coffee, mm-hmm. and then sit back out in the grass in the sunshine at a table and drink our coffees together and just love each other yeah Mm -hmm. that sweet sweet fellowship is it's un it's you can't you can't replace that with anything virtual you know so it was uninterrupted (laughs) amen sister (laughs) and we will do our best to bring that level of community to our if local Mm -hmm. and we would love to have you all join us and i bet there's lots of delayed if locals in your area so please visit the website look for an if local near you because a lot of the if local leaders like myself were in fort worth and we're all doing them on delay so you have plenty of opportunity and i just want to say that if you listen to this podcast today tuesday when it's releasing you still have access to listen to some if local online so you know uh, try to put that in your in your day today if you're listening on tuesday so friends as we like to say keep following the table flipper and leave the table flipping to jesus 